What makes myasthenia gravis go into remission? People with myasthenia gravis sometimes see an improvement in symptoms, and in some cases, symptoms disappear completely, even without treatment. This is known as remission. Experts do not know what causes the symptoms to change or disappear in these cases. Finding what circumstances change the course of the condition or make the symptoms disappear will help manage the disease better. The authors of one review, published in 2010, looked for factors that influence remission in adults. They found that patients are more likely to go into remission when diagnosed in the first year of the disease or if symptoms started before the age of 40. Men and women have the same chance of going into remission. Myasthenia gravis remission and thymectomy. A study published in 2013 looked at the link between thymectomy, the surgery to remove the thymus gland, and remission. From a collection of 16 related studies, there is evidence to suggest that thymectomy improves the likelihood of people with MG achieving medication-free remission and clinical improvements. This is particularly true in people with severe and generalised symptoms. Remission rates specifically for non-thymomatose MG where there is no tumour in the thymus gland ranged from 38% to 72% with up to 10 years of follow-up. Myasthenia gravis remission and vitamin D. Vitamin D has been shown to be related to autoimmune diseases such as multiple sclerosis and psoriasis. A case study was published in 2016 of one person with myasthenia gravis who took large doses of vitamin D as an experimental treatment and had her first remission, meaning she had no symptoms following this treatment. The 49-year-old woman in the case study had difficulty to treat MG, also called refractory MG, so she looked for alternative treatments outside of the treatments she was prescribed. It is important to note she did not stop her prescribed treatments while she was taking high doses of vitamin D and ate a calcium-free diet to avoid complications such as hypercalcemia. As a case study, this only provides anecdotal evidence from a single person that was observed at the time and who was taking an experimental treatment. More research must be done before a conclusion about the benefits can be drawn. It has not yet been proven that taking high doses of vitamin D is safe or effective and taking high doses of vitamin D is potentially harmful.